Hello, and I'm here again. Yes, <laughs> I'm on a second interview. Yes, because I'm an overachiever right before the holidays. But yes, welcome to another Naked TikTok with Dr. T. And today I have my first couple. Yay! I love couples. Yeah, just because I've been divorced twice doesn't mean that I don't love. I love couples. I love love. And I've helped many couples stay married, or many people do not get a divorce, because I love love. So I'm very excited. And I have Dr. Ryan Doyle. Is that how you say your last name? Yes. That is correct. You guys. And Tracy. They are terrific. I had the pleasure of spending a whole weekend in a mastermind with these two. And they're not only beautiful on the outside, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And let us know if you can hear us okay and if you can see us okay because we were having some kind of technical difficulty. So please put thumbs up if you're there and start sharing this with your friends because it's going to be awesome. Uh, but they are beautiful on the inside as well. And they have a mission and a calling and they are, what you see is what you get. So I love that. And that's why they're invited on Naked Talk because we are going to uh, go a little bit deeper on the relationship stuff. But for now, for the people that are not so blessed like me to know you guys, would you please introduce yourselves to the audience? <laughs> well, we were listening to your, your, your cast a little bit earlier, and you guys were, were bragging about the heat. Well, Tracy and I live up in the Pacific Northwest, and we've been in stormy, wet, typical Seattle weather, which is, <laughs> uh, which is it just feels like we're drowning. So, no, yeah. we... We're going to have a different Christmas as well. We, we are officially in Canada, but we don't get snow up here. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm Ryan Doyle. I'm a Cairo. I've been in Cairo for 20 years. Um, I initially, uh, when I was younger, I used to teach for the Pettibon system with uh, Burl and Sharon. I used to love teaching, found my passion, found my voice. And Aura, I just got to say, this is awesome because I can't see my head right now. <laughs> I, I can hear me speaking right now. It's the best thing. And you kept saying that I, I need to be louder. I've never been criticized for being quiet. <laughs> so, anyway. I know. <laughs> but, okay, if anybody's watching, can you please tell him that you see his head <laughs> and his beautiful wife's head too? Because I know that everybody can see you because I see. I see on the other screen and people can see that I'm looking away. I see what people see, but if you're there, please let us know that you can see us and hear us and that you can hear him okay, because I'm just hearing people very far away. That's why I'm using this, but I don't know if it's my, this thing, or it's me, so, but yeah, so you got to be a little bit loud, but I know you have no issues with that, but go ahead, keep introducing yourself. I'll do my best with intention, just, just let me know. Yes. Um, so I guess a bit of a background, um, Tracy and I met actually through work. Uh, we worked together. And then, of course, as children came, um, we did less together, which is funny how that all works. And then as, as we all know within business, whether you're a Cairo, an entrepreneur, or you're just in business, life for some reason kind of gets busy, mm -hmm. right? And uh, for years, for years, I wanted to teach. I wanted to, I wanted to coach, practice, teach the skills and the tools that I've learned. But there I was a couple of years ago. Business got busy. Kids got busy. There was a point in my life, in our lives, I suppose, where life got so busy, we got distant. And then all of a sudden, it just gets to the point where you start to ask yourself, is this what we want? Is this what we need? And you actually get, I mean, how many people, how many people do you know have gotten to a point where they get to the point where they're just like, I want to burn it all down. I want to yeah. leave everything, burn it, thrash it, destroy it. So here I was. There was a piece of me that wanted to teach. I wanted to coach. I wanted to give life strategies. But here I was, the, the coach, trying to burn my life down. Things weren't yeah. working. Right? And this is, I mean, ultimately, I think you know me through, through Dr. Ed and, and through our, our inner circle, et cetera. But it's one of the reasons why Dr. Ed and I have been a, kind of attracted together is that we so badly want to teach strategies, not just for business, not just for us to be more successful and provide more and, and do more, because that's good, that's awesome. But at the same time, if we're not growing us, if we're not growing 
our <clears throat> bodies, if we're not growing the purpose and the passion piece that everybody knows you for, Ara, if we're not working on growing each of those pieces at the same yes. time, you're only, what, what I've discovered anyway, is we're only as strong as the one area that we spend the least amount of time in. Yes. So, I mean, this is what, what we do now. Uh, Dr. Ed and I do a lot of coaching through, <clears throat> through Men of Iron, for example, where we just help to teach the strategies and the skills to make sure that we're building up all of those areas so we're not lighting fires in one area, which makes us have to go and put that fire out and distract us from being able to build and create in the other areas. And ultimately, you know, that's, that's been part of our journey is figuring out how, how to stay connected as a couple mm -hmm. and I, well, I know well, you and live, our own, live our own lives, but still stay connected as a couple. Right. And, and you've been talking a lot about um, um, Obama's, uh, Michelle, Obama. Michelle, Michelle Obama's book uh, a, lot lately, a lot lately. And the reality of it is, is in early, early life in a relationship, you, you talk a lot about, we used to brag that we never fought. <laughs> well, we've also discovered <clears throat> that our biggest growth comes from those regular collisions. They can be value-based collisions they can they can be collisions on anything but i don't know who you've ever talked to or who's ever said that relationships are easy nah it doesn't matter what kind of a relationship you're in whether it's business or, or personal this challenging it's 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 a good one anyway that's that's where we are and you have anything else to add on that yeah no i think just kind of coming full circle when ryan and i first started working together we were creating together and then as you know, like he was saying, kids got involved and he got really busy at work and I got really busy at home and we, we disconnected. And so the last, I'd say two to three years really found us having to really look at, are we still doing this together? How do we reconnect again? And our last year has been about rebuilding us again and rebuilding our family and going back to those foundational things that we used to have. And um, not that we're perfect by any means, but we're, we're learning how to do this dance again and coming up stronger. Yeah, so there's our intro. <laughs> I, I love this. I know. I, <laughs> I love this. And obviously you guys know me and you know what I'm passionate about. And this is right up my alley. So, uh, and yes, to answer your question, nothing that uh, is worth it is going to come without work. So it's going to take work if it's going to be worth it. And I love when you said, oh, no, we didn't fight. That means you were not engaging. Yeah, that's, it. <laughs> that's it. You were not engaging enough because my first marriage, I used to brag too that we were ne we never fought because <laughs> whatever I said went. Oh, I hope he's not. <laughs> but, um, but that was not good either because there, no, there was no growth among each other. We were not feeding each other values and growing in the same direction. We were just, it was just a one-sided street. And, and I also love what you, your work that you're doing with Men of Iron because with the coaching experience that I've had, working with guys to me is kind of hard because it is hard for them to go inwards and realize some of the weaknesses or challenges or things that we want to work on. Let's not call them weaknesses, right? Uh, it's extremely hard. So I love Men of Iron because of that, because you guys are realizing that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to work on those things. And you can totally go from there. And now I hear an echo. <laughs> this is God, this is crazy. <laughs> Let me lower my volume here. Uh, it's, it can go without having some bloopers on my last day of the year of doing interviews. But now going back to some serious stuff. I know you guys have a couple of kids, right? What are the ages of your kids, guys? Eight and nine. Ooh, fun. 13 months apart. <laughs> oh, 13 months apart. Mine are 17 months apart. So I hear you, baby. I mean, I'm right with you. <laughs> I'm going through two divorces. That was fun. Okay, so my, my, uh, I, I love that you guys work together and you are admitting, first of all, that you had some challenges and you're doing, you're working together towards improvement because a lot of couples stay married and they say they're happy and they're just dusting like we call it dusting under the rug all the things because it's best not to look at it because if we look at it it's ugly right 
So you guys are going through each step and creating the systems that work for you. Correct. Because there's no such at the perfect system that everybody should follow. There's just individual. But in that realm, my question to you guys is what would you say is your biggest struggle or the one thing that you need to keep going back to to readjusting, realigning, creating, tweaking the system in order to keep growing in the direction you want to go? Good question. I have an answer, but you go ahead. Okay. It sounds like we both have answers, so this is going to be great. <laughs> I mean, there's a myriad of different things that is constantly evolving in relationships. Um, the one thing that we've recognized that uh, we started a couple years ago where we would meet every Friday for a couple of hours, and we would go through what was working, what was not working. We'd go through our schedules, what we were creating, what we are working on. And That's as awesome. we did that, we'd be able to hear what each of each of us was going through and what and we could we could help each other with the processes that we we're going on so that every week got more and more constructive. Well, again, what happens is we have a tendency to tell stories, tell lies, tell all kinds of different things and things get in the way of those constructive conversations. Now, what we have learned is that. When we do, we, we, by the way, we call these Friday meetings church <laughs> simply because you, like, we, we do it religiously, right? So we do this on a regular basis. And when we do it, it's phenomenal for our relationship. And again, what happens is because we miss them every once in a while, just like a date night. Every time we miss a date night, we disconnect. Every, night, every, every week that we miss church, we disconnect. And so the biggest thing that we've observed is that if we're not working constructively together, it becomes destructive. Uh, yeah, I thought she can't. I thought she was just disappeared. I understand we've disappeared, have we? Sounds like we're still live, though. <laughs> so we're going to assume we're still live. <laughs> Should we exit out and go back into there? Because we probably need to. Uh, okay. She's so weird. All right.